welcome uh, to today's workshop on um, scholarships for Indian students to study at the University of Oxford. We're running this workshop in collaboration with the Oxford India Center for St Sustainable Development. And so today we'll be talking about the scholarships that are offered by the center. Uh, very quickly, before I um, uh, hand it over to the pan panelists, I'll just give you an outline of today's uh, workshop. So we'll talk about Project Edu Access. I'll, I'll introduce you to the panelists and then hand it over to them. Uh, you'll get um, an overview of what the center is doing, the work that they do and the scholarships that they have set up. And uh, we'll talk about each and every scholarship that is offered by the center. We we'll talk about the eligibility the application process and what they're looking for. Then we'll give you some general tips on the scholarship uh, when you're applying for the scholarship and then we move to Q&A. Um, very quickly, for those of you who are joining us for the first time, um, Project Edu Access is sending a network of students and initiatives where we all believe that access to higher education leadership and professional opportunities is a privilege that most people from marginalized communities are systematically denied and so we try to improve inclusivity in these spaces by removing some of these barriers um we run a mentorship program, we engage in advocacy, and we have been um, running capacity building workshops, both in person and online. We've actually worked with the Oxford India Center um, in sort of discuss, having more conversations on how to make um, um, scholarship opportunities more uh, inclusive and accessible. And we're so glad that we're able to run this session in collaboration with them today. Uh, very quickly, um, we have four wonderful scholars from the Oxford India Center joining us today, and they'll talk to you about um, each of the scholarships that they've received um, and talk to you about their experience of when they were applying. We have with us Medha Mukherjee, who's doing a DPhil in Geography and the Environment from Oxford, and uh, she is an in Oxford Indra Gandhi scholar. We have with us Niharika, who is doing an MSc in Nature, Society, and Environmental Governance, and she's a Savitri by Fule scholar. Um, we have with us Fahad, who's doing an MSc in Modern South Asian Studies, and is an Indra Gandhi Radhakrishnan gra graduate scholar. Sorry for the overlap there. And then we have with us uh, Isha Lavat, who is uh, doing the BCL, which is the LLM equivalent at Oxford. Um, and she is the Cornelia Sarabji scholar. Um, we also have with us Siddharth, um, who is the program director at the Oxford India Center for Sustainable Development. And will also be speaking about the center and the scholarships that are offered and would is a really helpful resource to um, answer all the questions that you may have about the scholarship. Um, so I will hand it over to you, Siddharth, but before that, thank you so much to all of you for joining us today and for making time um, on a Sunday to speak to um, everyone who's joined us today about um, the scholarships and the center. So thank you so much. We really do appreciate it. And uh, Siddharth, over to you. Thanks, Ms. Ba. And before I start, I just want to say a big thank you to Edu Access. Really glad to be doing this workshop with you guys. And a warm welcome to all the participants who are joining this call. And I wish you all the very best with your applications. And I think this is a really good opportunity for you to ask any questions that you may have regarding the scholarships and the application process. Mainly because we have our scholars who are based at the center who have gone through this whole process of applying and the scholarship interviews. And I think learning from their experiences might be quite useful for all the applicants. What I'm going to do in the next couple of minutes is to talk briefly about the Oxford India Center for Sustainable Development. And I'll also briefly mention the scholarships that we have for the next academic year to which you can apply for in the December, January deadline at Oxford University. Um, just one thing I would say is in the next few slides, I can't cover all the specifics and details of the scholarships we have. So this is a broad overview and some of the details I may present are subject to slight changes because we are still finalizing the minute details of scholarships. So if you do apply to Oxford, I would strongly recommend that you go to the OICSD website, go to the scholarships page and check the exact detail of the scholarship that you are hoping to apply for. 
And I'll also mention the application process along with our scholars. So hopefully things will become clear and we'll take question answers at the very end. So more than happy to take any questions that you may have. So starting with what the OICSD is all about, this was a unique partnership that was created in 2013 with the support of Government of India and Oxford University. And the key idea was to tackle some of the complex challenges and opportunities play, posed by sustainable development in India. So that's the broad overarching theme, sustainable development focusing on India. And the reason for that, one of the reasons for setting up this scholarship at the center was because about half the applicants who qualify for Oxford can't take up the places due to financial circumstances. So the objective is to support such students who are deserving but don't have financial needs. And I'm really proud and happy to be a part of this because I was in a similar position when I had applied for DFIL many years back. And the whole idea again is to enable bright Indian students to study at Oxford and empower the next generation of Indian policymakers and leaders. So the aim of the scholarship is not brain drain for India, but brain gain for India. Uh, Mizba, can we go to the next, next slide, please? So the OICSD is based at Somerville College at Oxford. Focus is on sustainable development, encompassing social, environmental, economic, and policy aspect. Now, the second bullet point is basically to give you an idea that the scope is quite broad. And to be a bit more specific, the scholars at the center are drawing in from examples in law, governance, engineering, technology, as well as humanities, physical, medical, and social sciences. So I would say point number three is quite important to understand that the scope of the center is quite broad as long as you can justify that your work encompasses sustainable development and has relevance for India. I thought I had to be a bit more specific, so I've taken some examples of the work being done by the scholars at the center. This is again not an exhaustive list. Go through the OICSD website. But to give you an idea on what projects are being funded at the center, we have Meda, who is working on water security. We have scholars working on food and nutrition, law, environmental policy, solar energy, climate change, public policy, gender inequality, human rights, constitutional law, human wildlife conflict, antibacterial resistance, policy for electric vehicles, impact of climate change on birds. Father has been working on infrastructure, the way cities are designed. Neharika is working on cost and climate change. Isha is working on her BCL programs, again, looking at sustainable development and law. So again, I hope these examples give you an idea on the broad scope of work being done in the area of sustainable development and India. Next slide, slide please, Ms. Ba, that's okay. So the scholarships at the center are for masters and DPhil. And by DPhil here, I mean PhD levels. So there are no undergraduate scholarships. It's postgraduate at either the master's level or the PhD level. For the October 2024 entry, the number of scholarships at the center are eight, which I think makes us one of the largest scholarship awarding bodies in the UK for Indian students. Now, point number three, to all of those who are on the call, who are planning to apply for OICSD scholarship, this is really important. There is no separate application process for the OICSD scholarships. You apply to Oxford. If your application is accepted by your division, your department, the application is forwarded to us directly. And then the center goes through your application, does a shortlisting process and invites you for an interview. So again, there is no separate application process for these scholarships. So why are we on this call? Does it matter? It kind of does matter because in your application, you will be submitting a statement of purpose. You will have letter of recommendations. And if you are planning to apply for these scholarships indirectly in a way, you have to specify in your statement of purpose how your research, how your studies relate to sustainable development in India. So when the application comes to us, it makes our job easier 
and makes your application a lot stronger compared to other applications. And we'll discuss on tips on how to apply and how to specify these things in the application later in the presentation. Uh, Ms. Ba, can you go to the next slide, please? Now, if you're on this call thinking, these goals that you have specified on sustainable development seem quite broad. How do I know whether my research or studies fit in within the scope? I would say go to the 17 United Nations defined SDGs and see whether your research fits in in any of these 17 categories. And if it does, in your statement of purpose, assuming your course is eligible for the scholarships, do specify how your research is fitting that particular criteria. Uh, next slide, please, Ms. Ba. So as I said, there are eight scholarships for the next academic year. So if you apply for your courses by December, January deadline, you will be automatically considered for this scholarship if your application is accepted through the division or the department. These are the eight scholarships. The first one is for PhD. The remaining ones are for Masters and BCL. And I think at this point, I'll stop talking. The best people to discuss this are the applicants who got through these scholarships. And I'll hand it over to Meda, who will talk about the first scholarship, which is for PhD, that is Indira Gandhi Scholarships. Thanks, Siddharth. Uh, I think uh, Siddharth already covered some of the points I wanted to cover about the SDG. So just uh, I'll just begin a little by introducing the scholarship. So it's a fully funded scholarship, which means that it covers your whole tuition fee and it also gives you a stipend that is more than good enough for you to live in Oxford happily. Uh, for the 2024 entry, there's one scholarship available. Uh, I'd like to make a note here that the PhD application is significantly different from any of the other master's applications and Project Educ Access has more detailed videos on how to do a PhD application. But um, just a note on that, that before you apply for the PhD itself, uh, you need to reach out to professors who can be your potential supervisors with just short two paragraph emails. I get this question a lot. Um, and yeah, so like Siddharth mentioned, you cannot separately apply for the scholarship if you get accepted for the PhD by your department. Basically, your departmental head will, I mean, if, if you meet the criteria of the scholarship, they will nominate you to the divisional level, which can be social sciences division, humanities division, medical sciences, so on and so forth. And then from there, the applications go to basically Siddharth, because he's the program director of the OIC. Um, now let's let's talk about the application a little bit. So across the entire, um, I mean, across the university, regardless of um, which department you're applying to, you will have a statement of purpose. You will have a detailed research proposal or a short research proposal, writing samples and records. So in your proposal, like he said, take a look at the SDGs, be flexible and have, I mean, the SDGs are guidelines, so you can always contextualize your own research in India with regard to any of the SDGs. I mean, it's about how you interpret and how you argue for sustainable development in your uh, proposal. And one important bit that I did for my application is I, I knew that I couldn't apply separately for the scholarship, but at the very end, I did mention that on these points, my research is very well aligned with um, the Oxford India Center's uh, priorities. Um, one smart thing that I learned from one of my professors, I didn't know that at the time of application he did it, but in the RECO, your referees can mention that you're a suitable candidate for this scholarship. So if if one of your professors or whoever it is that you're taking a RECO from, if they think, I mean, you, you can mention it to them that these, this is a scholarship I'd like to be considered for. And if they put it in their record, it's just a different way of getting noticed. It's how you can maximize getting noticed to your department and so on. Uh, one point I'd like to make about candidates' background, because this is a question, again, I get a lot. Uh, don't worry if you're from a different, I mean, you have a background that is not necessarily in any, any of these fields. So I did my undergrad in English literature in India, and then I did an MSc at Oxford, and then I went on to a PhD. So interdisciplinarity is good. It's really appreciated by the center. It's just how you link your different backgrounds and your learnings from different backgrounds. Um, your own grades, you can't change, but if you meet the eligibility criteria, I would really recommend that you apply. Um, for 
in terms of professional background and all the things that you've done, I personally feel that nothing is redundant. So look very deeply into whatever it is that you've, you've done till date in your CV and beyond your CV, and then think that how all of everything that you've done till date, how, where are the points that you can identify that align with your current research proposal? So it can be that you, vol it, it may not be related to your work. It may be you volunteered for something and that's more directly related. And this is this is probably a further phase. So suppose how the process works is you apply your department, uh, like I said, uh, your application goes on forward and then you get an email from the Oxford India Center, hopefully, if you get shortlisted for the interview somewhere, I mean, about two months after you, two or three months after you've applied, that you have been selected for an interview. Um, now that that that's a separate topic altogether. That how do you crack that interview? But it's if I had to put it very briefly, it would be definitely technical knowledge about your subject, your research area, what it is that that you're trying to study, and why. Uh, and building on the why question, that really matters. So why does your research matter, and why why should people care about it? What what impact can it have? And about impact it's necessary to be a bit realistic. Obviously, we will not change the world with one PhD, but just, just to think about the broader, um, I mean, uh, the, the broader uh, relevance of your research. So I think I'll end there. I don't want to reiterate what's already there on the website, but the scholarship website and your departmental website are your two main points of reference. And feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn if you have more questions. Yeah, so Ms. Ba, can you just go back to the previous slide? Yeah, so the, all of this is actually there on the website. So I'm not running through it. It's basically criteria, like I said, academic merit, but you, you can't change that at this point. So, so don't worry, as long as you meet the eligibility for your department, that's fine. Uh, I haven't won a single gold medal academically in my entire life. So it's not necessary to always come first and only then apply to Oxford. Second, relevance of studies to the center's interdisciplinary aim. So it's actually, like I said, you can be from any background. You just need to think how your academic background and what your current research is, how they relate to sustainable development. I have always only wanted to work in India. So three was not a challenge for me. But even if you want to work in another country, I think it's it's important that a part of your work definitely focuses on India because this is a scholarship that's funded by a part of it is funded by the Indian government. So it's it's public money and it's it's useful if it's of value to India. And leadership and entrepreneurial potential, I think this this is there across all scholarships, but it's just for research, you need to be able to take initiative and sort of uh, cut your own path. So this is this is just to bring out that from your background, everything that you've done and the evidence for it. Um, yeah, and the award covers fees, living costs. There are, I mean, there's more to this, but it's fully funded. So if you get selected, don't have to worry about anything else. Um, yeah, and I think Siddharth already covered application process. Thanks. Hi, uh, my name is Fahad and a big thank you to Edu Access for organizing these talks. Thank you, Meda and Siddharth. They've covered quite uh, comprehensively about various scholarships. I'll briefly talk about the scholarship that I am on, which is the Oxford Indira Gandhi Radha Krishnan Scholarship. Uh, there is one scholarship available. Uh, uh, this is for 23 entry, which is written on the slide. I think for 24 also, there's one scholarship. And this one scholarship is open to applicants for MSc in Modern South Asian Studies, which is the course that I am doing, which is a one-year course, MSc, a very interdisciplinary course, which studies the region of South Asia. Uh, there is this eligibility that you must be ordinarily a resident in India or have previously studied at, at an Indian higher education institution. Before coming here, I was working in India and I had studied in India. This is my first time studying outside India. So applicants uh, who have a similar background uh, can apply. Uh, of course, there is base, there is basis of academic merit, but like Meda said, that it is important for you to have a vision. It is important for you to be clear where you're coming from and where you are going. And I'll talk about these things uh, a bit later, the last, the last paragraph that you see on the slide. This is a fully funded scholarship. Uh, so... I didn't have any money uh, to be able to afford anything at Oxford. I think 
I needed everything. I needed living costs. I needed the tuition fee. And this scholarship has funded my course fully. It gives me a stipend, which is quite uh, generous uh, to live comfortably in Oxford. And it pays all your uh, tuition fee. Next slide, please, Nisba. Yeah, that was all about the scholarship. I'll come back to some tips about preparing for it later. But I think now Niharika will talk to you about Savitri Bhai Kula scholarship. Yeah. <clears throat> hi, um, hi, hello everyone. Um, and uh, thank you EduXS to um, invite us for this talk. And um, so I will talk about the Savitri Pule scholarship since I'm the first scholar and um, since the process, um, I mean, um, since I was applying to Oxford for the first time and the process was completely new for me. So um, if you consider yourself from a marginalized or underrepresented background, um, you can apply for this scholarship. And um, it is important for uh, you know improving the diversity and representation um, uh, like within the Indian um, students. Um, and I I will just take 10 minutes if if that's okay, Ms. Ba, to cover. I mean, they, uh, is that okay, Ms. Ba? I will just take 10 minutes. I just yeah so uh, i will just start with um, this thing i mean there's um, students they keep asking about uh, applying to the center and you know there's a lot of confusion because i was also very confused about the scholarship i was clueless and since it was launched um, uh, like I, I was the first recipient of it so i was just not aware that there's a scholarship um, uh, which exists like this so um, i would say the first thing is there's this first part which you have to focus on which is your graduate application which is where you apply to the department and when you apply to the department you have like five uh, six components your sop your essay your cv your transcript your reference letter which are very important so this is something very important you have to focus on that and then you will get your you know offer letter that's the first stage if you don't get your offer letter there's no i mean that's the ultimate goal uh, in the beginning you have to get the offer letter and then your department will nominate you and it's an it's an internal thing your um, your pro, your um, application will internally be sent to other uh, like funding not just the oicd it will reach out to the other um funding um uh, partners and um so when it will reach to oic sd i think um, for me it was like this that um i received an email a form where um the center asked me whether my research is associated with sustainability or um, you know there were many themes and does it cover something like that so my research means something which i am aiming uh you know to do uh, through my, uh, you know, um, through my um, Oxford, through my graduate, uh, the course which I have applied for in Oxford. So the center uh, did ask me about that. I, and I think it's for everyone else uh, also, for the other scholarships also. So, um, and then um, um, I think uh, they, for, you know, um, for this thing, you will also have... Uh, an application, not an application, a form which will ask you if you are from an underrepresented marginalized community. That is also one thing. And after you are shortlisted, I mean, they will again screen your profile, I believe. And if you are a potential candidate, you will get an interview invite. And that's where, um, you know, um, your preparation for OICD, uh, I mean, the center uh, for the interview will focus on. So, um, I mean, <clears throat> for this uh, interview, which will be for around 25 minutes, um, uh, like your graduate application would be screened. Uh, and um, all the components which I mentioned, SOP, essay, CV, transcript, uh, your reference letter, sorry, these are very important. And uh, <clears throat> your relevance to the course and to the center is very important. Um, so, yeah that is something extremely important and um, yeah i think 
this much is enough are we going to discuss it later i'm so sorry i was just are we going to discuss things later as well um after after we've gone over all of the scholarships we'll move okay, to okay, okay. Okay. so, okay. so uh, i think the relevance is i'm i'm sorry about this so the relevance is very much important for me i would uh, i would like to explain that i had a very relevant um, background academic background a professional background because i have done my uh, so my course is msc in um nature um, my my course is msc in nature society and environment and governance and when you look at my background i've done my honors in sociology where i've studied environmental sociology and environmental history i also have a masters degree which is in sustainable livelihoods which is very much you know uh, uh, relevant to the center and to the course which i have applied for i also have a work experience uh, which is um, like on sustainability on community development and environmental conservation and also the last thing which is extremely important is uh, which i also mentioned in my sop is my research area which on which i would like to focus which is on um, uh, environmental casteism which um, directly uh, like the framework directly um, aligns with um, you know this five six sustainable development goals that is something very important and it also aligns with the D, uh, dpsp of indian constitution and uh, um, human rights aspects so that is something very your relevance of your um, course and your your um, relevance of your course um, is very important so i think that was something for me uh, but i think um, that is also on the center um, to decide and don't limit yourself to this particular scholarship only if you come from a un underrepresented um, community uh, there are many other scholarships within uh, the center it also depends on um, like which um, course you want to take up so it uh, this particular scholarship covers 10 courses i i think around 10 courses but you can look for other courses also which are maybe the defen course um, the law course and you just don't limit yourself to this particular scholarship and uh, to the center only there are many other scholarships as well because uh, you need to maximize your chances of getting into uh, oxford and that you need to be very careful with that and the last thing um, is that um, for me uh, i mean uh, since i had uh, like i was working for 3 years i had a gap of like 3 years so i could not get my ielts exempted so ielts examination is something very important that you um, need to uh, you know there are chances you might not get an exemption um, and it also depends on your department so um i would say just because it can be a really big headache um if you don't score 7.5 because i had scored 7 and i was just you know uh, then finally i scored 7.5 but it was literally a very um last minute thing a lot of tension was there around this so if you think that this cannot be exempted so just start working on that as well and references references just uh, keep a track um, like just uh, be in touch with your referees and yeah that would be great thank you so much all right um hello everyone so um uh, before I start with uh, my introduction, I would just like to say uh, uh, something about the IELTS exam, because um, while Oxford, there are some universities like Oxford where you can take the IELTS exam um, after you've submitted your application, but some universities like Cambridge expect you to submit your um, IELTS score along with the application. Uh, unless I'm mistaken, I think the deadline for the law applications for Cambridge has already passed, but I'm sure for those of you applying to other courses, the deadlines may still, um, uh, 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 I mean, uh, they may still be there. So just, um, yeah, IELTS, unfortunately, is a very big headache. So just be very, very careful um, about that. Um, all right. So a, a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Isha. I just finished my um, um uh, BALB from India this year and um, I've come for my for the BCL which is the LLM equivalent at Oxford and um, for law there are three primary uh, 
three scholarships. So there is the Cornelia Sarabji scholarship, there is the HSA Advocates scholarship, and there is the Ratan Shah Zaiwala scholarship. And um, they are offered um, in, uh, I think, Ms. Bada, um I'm so sorry, but uh, it, it says Cyril Shroff scholarship, but I was actually talking about the Cornelia, but I, I'll talk about this as well. So the Cyril Shroff scholarship, I think, was uh, started last year. And the BCL is also one of the courses that was um, uh, uh, that is considered when awarding this scholarship. This year, I believe it has been given to somebody who is pursuing the Master of Public Policy. But again, for those of you who are thinking of uh, pursuing the BCL and thinking of being considered, this is also one of the scholarships that you should perhaps keep in mind. Um, Ms. Ba, can you go to the Cornelia? So, yeah, thank you so much. So um, there are, as you can see, there are six courses that uh, the law scholarships are uh, given for. There's BCL. There is, um, I don't know. So the second one, which is the MJUR, um, most Indian students don't go for this because the MJUR is usually given for us people coming from a civil law background. So um, you hardly see Indians applying for the um, MJUR. Uh, then there's the MSc Criminology, uh, MSc in Law and Finance, MPhil in Law, and MPhil in Social Legal Research. Um, it must be uh, taken into account that the Cornelius Rabji, the HSA Advocates, and I believe the Ratan Shah Scholarship as well, they're partial scholarships. Um, so if you're considering, um, so if you have received these scholarships, although the, the amount is substantial, but it would be a good idea to apply for some other scholarships as well, such as um, the I mean, there are, there are a number of external scholarships that that are given to Indian students. So if you think that you will require that you are short of funds and, and you require um, your entire tuition fee uh, uh, to be uh, uh, fully to be funded, then maybe you, you should consider other options as well. Um, so uh, I, mean, I mean, just don't just be dependent on, um, you know, these. But I mean, other than that, at the, Having said that, these scholarships are quite substantial. Um, secondly, um, so that was about the um, uh, the courses that are covered. Secondly, uh, also you must keep into account um, that along with the when you when you are being considered for these scholarships, of course your research interests and your background um, and whether it aligns with the goals of the center that is taken into account. But apart from that, uh, you find the, the I think the center also considers financial need while um, considering uh, you for the scholarship. So again, like Medha said, uh, perhaps that is something that one of your uh, 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 that you can ask one of the people who's recommending you to put that um, in your application that this is a brilliant student, but they also uh, are uh, in uh, they also need financial help and and, and it would be nice for them to be considered uh, for uh, such and such scholarship. Um, finally, uh, the law, uh, I think somebody on the chat as well asked a question about um, whether um, qu disciplines that are more theoretical in nature are considered uh, for these scholarships or not. And the answer absolutely is yes. Um, so just to give you an idea of the people that have received the law scholarships. So um, I have a background in environmental law, um, the 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 person who received the Cornelius Sarabji scholarship last year um, was uh, is very interested in inquiring into uh, women's rights, and right now she's doing a DPhil in um, looking at disability selective abortions. Um, another scholar who received the HSA scholarship last year um, is in fact, does not even have any interest in public law. She is right now doing, um, uh, she, sorry, last year, she, all of her courses were geared towards private law and um, mo much of her research focuses on corporate governance. So um, this, the center does fund a wide range of uh, research interests. It looks in, so all you have to do is ensure that you, you're making a very good case of how your um, your work, your past experiences, your um, uh, your future, uh, work, the, the kind of work that you want to do in the future is aligned with the center's goals, right? Um, but otherwise, I, I don't think that there is any one particular, um, uh, you know, there's any one particular discipline or any one particular field of research that uh, that can be, that the center sort of tries to look for. It's, it's a very broad, um, very, very broad 
areas of research that the center would be willing to fund if you can make a good case for it. Um, finally, there is, um, so yeah, I think, so I've covered the Cornelius Rabji Scholarship, the HSA Advocates and the uh, Ratan Shah Zaiwala. Um, again, all of these scholarships are offered to, I mean, only the law courses. Um, and um, again, so a little bit about the application process. Um, so when you, of course, you by 20th um, January, that is when most of the master's law applications have to be sent out. After that, I think around February, um, you will receive an email uh, that will ask you whether your research areas are, align are aligned with, with what the center is looking for. So try to fill as many um, of those um, as possible, as long as, I mean, of course, um, uh, that is something that you've done a little bit of work in. Um, secondly, um, for the law scholarships, um, I mean, the application process is not very convoluted. It's pretty simple. There are a couple of things. So for example, the um, your SOP, um, which the center looks at, again, it's your recommendation letters, your CV. So I, I think just keep um, that in mind when you're preparing your um, uh, application documents, um, like Neda also mentioned. Um, finally, um, yeah, I, I think that's about it. Um, if anybody has any further questions about the law scholarships, I would be happy to answer those questions later on. Um, but yeah, that's about it. And all, all the best to everyone who's applying. Uh, thank you, Isha. Uh, I just want to take the, I think the final 10 minutes of this presentation to go over how you can prepare an SOP which will make you a very strong candidate for all Oxford India Center scholarships. So I, I, I think of it broadly in three ways. Uh, the first question that you must ask yourself is, who are you? And, and I, I, I'm, this is not a very philosophical question here. I'm, I, I mean to say that who are you as a person? Where do you come from? What are your experiences and skills? And who are you as a professional? What is it that you have done? What is it that you studied? Uh, because remember, whenever a center or any agency is giving you scholarship, you are an asset for them. It is their investment in you. And it is very important for you to realize that you must present yourself as an asset, somebody who will contribute something. This is not uh, this is not a charitable way of doing things. You get the scholarship because you are deserving and you are an asset. So ask yourself, who are you? What is your experience? Where were you born? Is there something that is coherent about that and about problems of sustainable development, for example? What have you studied? What is the professional you? So in my case, for example, I studied architecture and uh, towards, uh, as my career progressed, I became closer and closer about understanding vulnerabilities and human rights in city. So sustainable cities became that vertical in which I became eligible and a strong candidate for my scholarship. Next slide, Ms. Ba. The next question that you want to ask is, what do you want to do? And this is, again, is one of those questions that you are, you've been asked throughout your life, especially when you were very young. What do you want to do when you grow up? And the question will come back to you when you're preparing your SOP again. The first question in this, you must ask what challenges India faces? India faces, it's a complex society. It's a very, very extremely diverse society. And it faces a lot of challenges of sustainable development, the sustainable development goals, as Siddharth was talking about. Here, the most important thing for you is to be very specific very very specific and i'll give you an example of my uh, my problem statement as it is called then you have to ask yourself what will you do about it again be very specific for this solution you have to identify a specific problem and you have to present a specific solution and as you see i have tried to visualize it as a venn diagram here this is where you your solution will align with your experiences so you must try and answer the question, what will you do in the near future? So immediately after you get the scholarship, when you step out, what is it that you can do in the next five to 10 years? Again, be very specific. 
what do you want to do in your lifetime? What is the larger agenda of your career? So there is a larger goal which we break down into steps. So what will be the first step that you take towards that goal? Then comes the question, why are you the best person to do this? Maybe you have the right skills. Maybe you demonstrate interest through maybe, uh, you know, volunteer work throughout your college, through the subjects that you've studied. Maybe so you've written something and got a, gotten it published somewhere. And you maybe have worked in the field and you demonstrate experience like Niharika was talking about. And therefore, do you have a vision to solve this problem? Let's come to the next one, Ms. Ba. And finally, why is the Oxford India Center the best place for you to do that? Oxford India Center is a community of people, of academics, of young researchers, or of, of experienced lecturers and professors. And these people have been dealing and thinking about these problems that India faces for a long time now which means that there is a massive amount of ongoing research and past research at Oxford India Center. It's a collection of these people who have been thinking about these things. And this is where you must try and find your place. What can be your contribution? Your contribution, as I've tried to uh, visualize here, is something that puts you and Oxford India Center together. India's problems and Oxford India Center's research is something that comes together and your solution and your experience come together with India's problems. And it is at the center of these three that you must try and situate your SOP. So you should ask yourself, is there space for innovation at Oxford India Center? Is there something that is missing? Is there something that is already happening and probably you can add to it? And therefore, what will you bring to the center? Remember, you are an asset. And when you are an asset, it is very important that you present yourself as a solution to a problem and a very clear solution. Next slide, Ms. Ba. And therefore, when you're working on your SOP, I think this is the most important word for you, clarity. And here I'll, I would like to give an example of my own SOP. So I am an architect, I've studied architecture. Uh, so I know how buildings are designed. I have worked in that field for some time. And I asked a simple question. I said, okay, in India, we, we plan our cities based on population projections, which means that we project what the population of an area would be in the next 20 years. And we take that number and we plan our cities. But if you look at a lot of social science literature, you will understand that cities are actually very politically, socially, and economically active spaces. Cities are not laid out according to numbers or mathematics. Cities are actually laid out according to politics, sociology, and economics. Here is the gap that I identified in my SOP, that this, there is a gap between this social science literature and urban planning. Now the question, what can I do about it? So I propose that in the near future, I want to start a think tank that can bring social scientists as active consultants on the project, as opposed to post-development critics. At the moment you have urban development, which gets criticized by social scientists and rightfully so, but that criticism never reaches urban planners' tables. What if we can bring those, those people as consultants on these projects and improve our urban planning? Now, that was a very specific solution to a very specific problem that I gave. And I said that if, after I step out in the next five years, I would like to establish this center. That also gives me a lifetime goal and agenda for my career, which is to make urban planning more humanistic closer to human realities, closer to the experiences of the city. And so you see how I structured my SOP with such clarity. There's another aspect to clarity, which you should be clear about why you are coming to Oxford. I think Siddharth is here and he might remember. He asked me a question that you've been working for a while now and uh, you, have, uh, you can probably go for a PhD. Why do you want to come for master's? And... I said to the panel, I said that, yes, I've been working and I've been doing this through my own reading, but I find myself running into dead ends, uh, theoretical dead ends. I find myself running into methodological dead ends. And by coming to Oxford and studying a course of humanities will give me those skills, which I currently do not have. I think it's very important to have the clarity of what you don't have. A lot of applicants shy away from telling people what is it that they don't have, what is it that they lack. I feel that in my case, 
and also uh, kudos to the panel that they created a comfortable environment where I could tell them what is it that I'm lacking. But to be very clear what I am coming here for and what I can contribute to the center. These things really stood out for my application. That's my eight minutes, Ms. Ba. I'll end uh, general tips here. I'm happy to answer any questions as we go further. Uh, Ms. Ba, um, if it's all right, can I uh, talk a little bit about um, the general tips and, um, and and just add to what Fahad said? So, um, uh, firstly, I don't think I could have given a, a better general introduction of the different scholarships for hard you covered that brilliantly and the interview process as well um but there are two things that uh, i would like to add firstly um uh, about the oxford india center um i i believe the one one of the common themes in the comments is that will my course be considered for for so and so scholarships or if i have um a, a like a very unique um uh, kind of work or, or degree that I'm applying for, will I be considered? Um, while I'm sure Siddharth can give much more clarity on this, but um, from my experience and from the kind of people that I have encountered at the center, I don't think that there is a right um, kind of research area or or, or, right, or any sort of right formula that, that you can um, uh, try and, and then be accepted for the scholarships. Um, different people have been accepted uh, for for the scholarships who have completely different um, and and wide ranging research interests like i also said some i know somebody who got a scholarships who is interested in corporate governance right and then there's somebody else who was interested in women's rights i'm interested in environmental law so um so so i think just be assured that um if your research pertains to india and and, and of course sustainable development is such such a wide wide field and it covers so many research areas right so again it's all about how you make a case for yourself right and for that um i think you can get more information on the center's website so just peruse that very very carefully um the second thing is that the center provides a very enriching environment for all the people who are here i think all of us because uh, place small cities in the UK like Oxford can be very isolating and this in, and can be very daunting as well it's very I mean, it, when you come to places like Oxford it's a it can be a very um intimidating place so um and the center and and the people in the center they are when you come here they're very warm it's it's a very nice community um so, I mean, regardless of, I'm, and I'm sure that all of us who are here, we didn't think that we would make, I mean, forget the the um, the scholarship. A lot of us didn't think that we would even make it through the application process, right? So um, on that front, my only suggestion would be is that is to just apply, just take your chances. You never know, you may just get in, right? I didn't have any work experience and I still got the bcl so um just just take your chances mm -hmm. and um and yeah that's about it thank you um Ms. Ba, is it okay if i take it yeah go for it. so isha and fahad really just i mean that that is i couldn't have put it better very beautifully put um just just a few uh note on the other scholarships for indian students um i'll go back to my master's time a bit um, the Weidenfeld Hoffman scholarships, they mainly do masters, no longer PhD, Chevening. I think there's a whole um, list, but for next year, I think the scholarship deadline has passed for Chevening scholarships for 2024. But anyway, it's useful. Two things to know about Commonwealth and Chevening is that there is a binding clause of returning to your home country, which you cannot uh, it's it's more flexible. I mean, obviously, all scholarships want you to contribute to your country and ideally want to go back. But there is flexibility depending on if you can show enough evidence that I am working on my country based in the UK, which is something that I did. Uh, ESRC Grand Union DDP. So I think they recently it's a PhD scholarship. They recently opened it up to international students. And then you have college scholarships. So Oxford has this collegiate system. You have the dip for your postgraduate studies. Your department is in charge of your 
academics, but your college is for your social well-being, where you'll stay, where you eat, where you'll have a community, and also colleges do their own scholarships. Uh, I mean, Indira Gandhi Scholarship is called Indira Gandhi Scholarship because Indira Gandhi studied at Somerville College. Uh, coming to the Felix Scholarship, so I think except the Oxford India Center Scholarship, Felix Scholarship is the only other set of scholarships that's specifically targeted at Indian students coming to Oxford. Um, Siddharth can also jump in here at any time. He he was a Felix scholar um, a few years ago, and it was it was interesting when for my Indira Gandhi scholarship I was interviewed by a Felix scholar alum. I was on the just a bit about me. So I did my undergrad in English literature, and then I worked for two years, and then I applied to Oxford on an MSc program. And for that program, I was selected for the Felix scholarship. But again, it was. It's a very anxious time. You apply to the course and then suppose you get in for the course and then you're just you have these two month period where you have the offer letter from the course, but you don't know if you've gotten selected for the scholarship. Uh, my year was the COVID year. So that was 2020, 2021. I didn't apply for Rhodes and Inlax got cancelled that year. So I was just hoping and praying that some internal scholarship works out. Um, again, how it works is that you just get an email. Felix For Felix scholarship, all courses are eligible. Uh, it doesn't matter what you're studying. So I've had colleagues who've, who study theoretical physics and then also history of art, uh, but a bit, but this is where the application is the most important. And th this applies for the OICST for master. I'm speaking specifically to the master's students now. Um, is that when you're, I think Fahad already covered it, but I'll just speak a bit more about it because I did that interdisciplinary jump. So he went from architecture to humanities and I went from humanities to MSc. Uh, which is professionally and academically what I did not have. So academically, it was completely English literature, humanities, philosophy. And then professionally, I was a writer in the film industry for quite some time. But then I, what I did was in my application, I reflected on my personal background. So I grew up in Calcutta. And then I, I, I grew up next to this wide range of um, urban informal settlements from where my domestic help used to be. And it's just introspecting on that and looking at your own personal background, where you have grown up, what are the issues that you have observed in society with regard to, like I said, sociology, politics, philosophy, anything, and then sort of relating that with your academic background and what you are applying for, what you're trying to do. So it's, I think, yeah, just, just harping back on Fahad's slide that the personal you is just as important as the academic you or the professional you. And just one fun, like final point to build on what Isha said is that I think all of us suffered from that anxiety, whether at all we were good enough for Oxford. There's a term here, it's called the imposter syndrome. Uh, and growing up, I always had this idea that only people who come in the top three of a course, like the, only the toppers can apply to Oxford and get into Oxford. That's not true. Um, it is more about what value you are adding to Oxford and va what value you can take from Oxford with that very specific thing that you want to focus on. Um, so it is not just limited to your uh, academic accolades. Just, just think a little introspectively and go for it. Go for it. You can't get in if you don't apply. Uh, Miss Bhatt, there is, okay, there's going to be a live demo. We'll take the questions later. Okay. Ms. shall I take it for the live demo? I am going to try and be rather fast, but at the same time, as specific as I can. And I think my job has been made extremely easy by all the scholars here who were more specific and direct and clear in their answers than I can be. So thanks, everyone. In the next few minutes, I'm going to do two things. Number one, I'll do a quick overview of the website and how the whole pathway is related from the scholarships to the application process. And second, there are quite a few questions on the chat here, which are regarding the scholarship application process. And I'll try and answer those as I go through the whole thing. So the first thing I'm going to do now is share my screen and just show you what are the key web pages where you have the information regarding the scholarship. Can you see my slide? Sorry, not slide, screen, super. So anyone who's planning to apply for the Oxford University MSc or DPhil and want to be considered for the scholarship, although there is not a separate application process for the scholarship, I would strongly recommend 
that you go to the OICSD website and go to the scholarships tab. When you go there, what you would notice is there are a list of scholarships that are available for you for the coming academic year, which is October 2024 entry. Have a look at this web page very clearly. And if you're applying for a DFIL, the application that you want to go for is the Indra Gandhi scholarship. If you're going for MSc courses or BCL, these are the scholarships. Now, if I were to click on Indra Gandhi, it tells me that, sorry, this is Radha Krishnan. It tells me that the course you're eligible for is MSc in Modern South Asian Studies. I'm focusing on this particular, as an example, but a lot of you in the chat have posted, I want to do an MSc in Development Economics, MSc in Evidence-Based Social uh, Policy Intervention, MSc in Mathematical Sciences. Is my course eligible for the scholarship? My request to you is go to the website, go through these scholarships and check whether your course appears there or not. If your course is there, great, you can apply. You would be considered for the scholarship. You can't apply for the scholarship directly. Now, let's say as an example that you were to apply for MSc in Modern South Asian Studies. So at this point in your application process, you know that if you apply for this course and if you're accepted for that course, and if your studies relate with sustainable development and India, you will be considered for the scholarship. So let's go to the course website. And this is MSc in Modern South Asian Studies. Again, as an example, I'm not suggesting you apply or not apply, just an example. First thing I would look at as an applicant is the deadline. Please do apply before the deadline. This next thing I would look at is entry requirement. Do I fulfill the criteria? Super important. Now, a lot of you in this chat, I'm assuming, would be thinking, am I good enough? Should I apply? Why don't you let that decision be taken by the university? Yeah, all you need to do is, are you eligible or not? That's the question that's in your hand. So if you're eligible, check what the academic requirement is. What does it say here? First class or strong upper second class? How strong? Very strong? Who knows? Check what it says in terms of percentage. Go to the link, guidance on qualifications and grades. It says very clearly what percentage are expected. And if you're from institutions which are in this category, again, I'm showing you a lot of links here. These might be confusing, but these links are given on the course web page. Click on those links. Doesn't cost any money. Go through those and check whether you are eligible or not. If you're eligible and the next step then is to click on how to apply. Check what documentations are required. What written work is required. CV, the page length, the SOP, the reference letter are super strong. Go through those, make an application. If you're accepted, the application comes straight to us. Now what I want to do is to try and figure out how do I stop sharing it. Let's see. Stop share, good. Now, what I'm going to do is make a request to all the participants on this chat to not post any question for the next five minutes. And I'm going to plow through those as fast and as clearly as I can. Because some of these are going to be useful for everyone else in the chat. So the first question I have here in the chat is from Ritum, who is asking, do I need to apply to Somerville to be considered for this scholarship or not? The answer is no. You can apply to any college. If you're accepted for the scholarship, you will be transferred to Somerville if you want the scholarship. The next question I can see here is from Raghvendra, who's asking, is there scope for visiting PhD fellows at Oxford? The answer is yes. It's not a graduate application process. You need to contact the host in the department who you want to visit. If they support your application, you can come as a visiting PhD fellow. The next question is from Fatima. Can Indian Muslim applicants avail Savitri Bhai Fule scholarship? My request, Fatima, go to the Savitri Bhai Fule scholarship webpage. There are two criteria. If you fulfill one or more, you are eligible. Do any of the scholarships cover MSc in Development Economics? I think they do. But again, go to the scholarships webpage. Look at the list of courses there. And if your course is there, you are eligible. 
are these scholarships only for masters and phd exclusively yes no undergraduates but bcl is also covered and so on so again my request is go to the course web page look at the scholarship for msc or bcl and check whether your course appears there or not uh, Somerville does not accept graduates for the MSc that I'm interested in. Can I still apply? You can apply to Somerville. You can apply to the university. You won't be considered for the OICSD scholarship if your course is not there. Having said that, the Indira Gandhi scholarship considers all DPhil applications and all courses. Uh, is MSc in Mathematical Sciences eligible? Check the website. If it's there, great. If not, all DPhils are eligible. Scholarships around public health specific. I think that's a very broad question. Again, you need to do course website. There are health related courses which are considered. Yash has written, what about the contribution of these courses uh, to more philosophical theoretical concepts? Yash, I think it's again a very broad question. There are more than 50 scholarships that have been awarded over the years to Indian students at the center. If you have doubts whether your research topic fits in or not, whether it's too theoretical or too philosophical or too applied, go to the course website, look at the work that the current scholars are doing, and I think that would help guide you. But my request is you don't make that decision if the course you want to apply for is there on the website for OICSD scholarship. And if you meet the criteria for the course you want to apply for, make an application and let the panel and the university decide whether it's good enough or not, whether it's too theoretical or not. But my request is do apply if you're eligible, why not? Uh, would expressing an interest in OICSD scholarship in our SOPs alienate us from other scholarships? From my perspective, the answer is no. If you apply to OICSD and say, I'm going to be applying for this, this, this scholarship, I would say, great, that makes sense to me. You want to diversify your risk? If you are working in sustainable development, we will consider your scholarship as long as the department forwards your scholarship application to us. What happens to other scholarship? I hope you get those as well. All the best. But from my side, we want to maximize the chances of students from India to come to Oxford on a scholarship. Um, let's see what next. What comes first, the admission offer or the Indra? Gandhi Center's short listing email. I hope both come to you. But the timing is interesting. We can't say how the departments function and at what pace they operate. But if you get an email saying that you have been shortlisted for the interview, that basically means that you have been accepted for your course at the department. Uh, okay, sorry, may the head answer that. Does OICSD send out mails to all applicants to provide basic details? It depends on the scholarships. Sometimes to speed things up, we do contact the applicants even before they have been accepted by the department because the OICSD tries to conduct interviews before other scholarships. So I think we do interviews by mid-April while other scholarships may do it in May or June or July sometimes. And we want to bring forward the date as much as possible so the applicants have time for getting the visa and the course starts on time so you're not delayed. But all I would say is unless and until you get an admit letter from the department and a scholarship letter from the OICSD, don't consider an email asking for extra information as a sign of anything. Uh, so I think. That covers all the questions in the chat. If you have any follow-up questions or any new questions, please feel free to post it either in the chat or unmute yourself and ask it on the call. Uh, Ms. Buck, can I, can I address one question here? Yes. Uh, yes, you have uh, sent a very interesting and a very loaded question. Academics has come under attack around the world since some time. Relevance of academic research tends to be guided by market logic, which focuses more on short-term tangible gains. That is not necessarily true. Sometimes market logic also contributes to long-term gains. 
if uh, i would uh, suggest you go and you find out how nasa started it was an individual effort in making rockets it was not a government project uh, so this is often times a false binary and ignores intrinsic goods and other values keeping that in mind does the sustainable development theme and oicsd do justice or give space to theory philosophy intellectually oriented topics and then you have expanded on this further saying i meant theoretically oriented softer science sciences excluding technical courses like architecture and professional courses uh, i think there is a broad answer to this uh, today every question of philosophy every question of politics every question of sociology is a question of sustainability the the large uh, danger that we face as a species from climate change is touching all of us in all our aspects philosophers for example are reimagining the binary of human and nature they are reimagining the very idea of what we think is nature and what we think is human that is something that sustainability comes in contact in pure philosophy in pure ontological philosophy uh, architecture is not just a technical course if you read what i write uh, my work is in philosophy of design so sometimes we tend to make these uh, these these assumptions but like siddharth said leave these questions to the judgment of the panel do not limit yourself by thinking about this there is a very broad range go to the oxford india centers website you will find historians who have, who have worked at the center you will find urban planners you will also find people who are for example looking at law people who are looking at human rights because these are all today questions of sustainability unless and until we answer these questions we as a species will not be able to sustain ourselves on this planet so i just wanted to take that as a i think it's important for uh, for for all of us to remember that thanks fad we have a couple more questions in the chat uh, is every application from an indian student sent to the oicsd or is there a screening process by the department the answer is there is a screening process all applications don't come to us only those who have been selected by the department and when the department thinks they are meeting the criteria we get the application um, the next question is i don't have a strong academic background but i have a professional experience of almost a decade as a journalist i'm very interested to build on peace building shall i encourage myself to apply i keep my response is go to the oicsd website see whether the scholarships you are keen on uh consider those courses that you want to apply for and if you're eligible do apply even if you're not eligible for the oicsd scholarship but you meet the criteria of the course at oxford strongly request that you do apply and see how things go from there because at this level when you're applying for the top university and to a scholarship that's extremely competitive the last thing you want to do is either not to apply or to apply only for one scholarship and one university you have to hedge your bets you have to apply for a few universities and you have to apply for as many scholarships for which you are potentially consider so go for it i would say encourage yourself to apply encourage yourself to go through the whole process of application and eligibility criteria don't apply if you don't meet the eligibility criteria simple so go through the details The next question is I'm keen to apply for MPhil in visual material and museum anthropology are there any specific scholarships for the same uh Davalina I don't think Oxford in Center for Sustainable Development would support that course but I'm pretty sure there would be other scholarships who might consider it the Indira Gandhi scholarship considers all subject areas for the DPhil program so I hope that kind of helps a bit um uh, another question is regarding msc in water science policy will i be considered go to the course website if your course name is there you will be um uh, is there a possibility of getting exemption for application fee i think at the time of application and don't quote me on this but at the time of application you have to put in the application fee and you can ask for some reimbursement later maybe if you get a scholarship but to the best of my knowledge and again i may be wrong the application fee would be taken off from next year onwards 
Uh, for the current application cycle, when do the deadlines for scholarship applications lie? For the OICSD scholarships, as long as you apply within the deadline for your MSc or DPhil course and you're eligible, you will be considered for the scholarship. Would it be all right to reach out to one of the panelists on the LinkedIn account since one of their interest? I think that should be okay. As you see, quite a few thumbs up there. I think that's all fine. Uh, okay. Can I apply for second PhD in another stream? If I already have one, my first PhD is advertising and marketing. I want to study organizational behavior and sustainability. I think I have seen applications where a same student applies to two different courses for the DPhil. So that is okay. So my request, Hannah, to you would be, if you're making a DPhil application, as Medha said, having support of the supervisor is quite important. So I think the only tricky aspect, if you're applying for multiple DPhil courses at the same university in the same department is, you're writing to different faculty members and saying, can I do my DPhil under you? And that might go against you. But from the application process and the scholarship side of things, you can apply for two courses at the same time. Uh, Ritum Kumar has a question on SOP. Can I ask? Yes, please, Ritum, you can ask. I think one of our scholars would be better suited to answer those. Ritum, do you Hi, want to uh, ask? Sure. Yeah. Thanks, Siddharth. Uh, hi, um, thanks uh, to all the panelists for taking this time. I have a very basic question. Uh, you guys spoke intensively about, uh, you know, what all things we should be including in the SOP and how we can go about structuring it. But, uh, you know, given that there's a word limit of just 300 words, uh, you know, for the course that I'm applying to, it is a major challenge. I tried to write my SOP, you know, a couple of times, shorten it up, but, you know, always there's something that I keep missing out on, you know, some points about here and there. It's, it's really difficult to sort of convey like all the points, as you rightly said, were the points that I also wanted to cover in my SOP, but really difficult to just convey it in just 300 words. What is, uh, you know, the one tip or the suggestion that you can, uh, you know, give to, you know, sort of uh, deal with this issue? I can take, Isha, you want to take it? Um, yeah, uh, just, uh, um, so, uh, I mean, when I applied for the BCL, um, so it was very clearly stated um, on the page where uh, the uh, eligibility criteria and application process is mentioned that um, your when your department is looking at your application, they will not the SOP is not something that they give a lot of importance to. The academic department primarily looks at your marks, your letter of recommendation, and um, and then your CV. So, um, and they do mention that the SOP is something that um, is mostly used uh, to gauge your eligibility for scholarships and, um, and, and your interest areas. So, um, having said that, then keep that in mind, you know, while drafting your SOP, that more, that um, it's, that it, it, it is one of the tools that uh, will be strongly looked at by people who are, um, uh, uh, considering you for scholarships um so maybe keep that more aligned to talk to, so so when you're drafting your sop of course talk about your academics maybe in a line or two since it's just 300 words but more than that use it to talk about yourself use it to talk to talk about your work your research interests um because as far as your academics is concerned that is already covered um when you submit your transcript when you submit your cv and your letter of recommendation. Um, yeah, that's about it. Thanks, Isha. Mida, after you. Uh, thanks. Another thing that you can do, and some students do, is that just, just reach out to somebody on your course, uh, whichever course that you're applying for on LinkedIn, and request them that, would you be happy to take a look at my SOP? I do it for multiple SOPs every year. So sometimes it's a 300-word uh, SOP it's not that long and you can you can have a current student or an alum just review it so feel free in reaching out to people if you're like really confused because none of us can really instruct you on exactly what points you need to cover unless we actually look at the text so I can give you general advice but just 
yeah i mean i anyone at oxford if you just just if they are okay with it then just send it to them and tell request them that can, can you just take a quick look at this uh they may say no but you they may say yes and that will really really help you out uh, i also wanted to take the next question uh which was uh from rani kumari because uh yeah that is that is that fine i'll, I'll just uh, i'll just add to the sop bit so uh you know just be very uh these are your best friends the sticky notes and a pen yeah. so if you if you let's say if you don't want to miss out on anything and you want to prioritize because if you have 300 words you must prioritize you will have to put some things out and you'll have to keep the strongest points in write everything about yourself in this born in chennai whatever right bsc in mathematics everything take it out put it on the wall and then look at it move the stickers around try and arrange them in a coherent manner and prioritize between them it will become clearer to you sometimes when we keep our thoughts in our mind our mind is too occupied holding those thoughts throw them out on a white board maybe just use sticky notes put them up and make yourself flexible in you know working with your thoughts this works for me hugely and this is a technique that has helped me think through my sops my applications of all sorts so this is just apart from uh, what very important advice that meena and isha gave this is just a little crafty technique for you to be able to think clearly with that self help thought thanks thanks for that thanks meena right uh, siddharth is it okay if i take the next question it's a big question but uh, this is this is interesting if we frame our research topic by being critical of the existing concept of sustainable development as scholars called it as as an ideological oxymoron and a tool of neo colonialism as it follows the same ontological premises on which the logic of colonialism and ecological crisis created by and large if we such create critical outline of our research will they really consider such application the answer to that is yes i for my msc application was highly critical of the concept of development as it was currently being treated in the world my entire essay's topic was i think decision making development and ethics and i took from a humanities background i had a highly critical uh, lens to how it was being viewed and it was being studied so yes the point at oxford is you can be critical but you have to have a, a proper coherent argument and evidence to back up your criticism the main difference between people i think who get in and he, who don't are people who just mindlessly criticize saying everything is wrong with, with the world and everything is bad and th that is a very unrealistic way of approaching it if you are taking that stance which i did it is very very important that you are very clear in exactly how what kind of evidence are you building your argument on if it looks very opinionated and advocacy based in your application this will not get in and i i have to be direct here because this is what my professors uh, were very direct with me and it was the I, i didn't like that but i i think it helped me the most um yeah shorter sentences are better from your comment in terms of what i can i can see this is also another advice that i got but yeah you can be critical but if you're being critical and you're speaking authoritatively make sure that you have a balanced argument and you have solid evidence to back it up it's it's not a pro problem to challenge the thinking the intellectual thought uh but you really have to make sure that you you don't come off as somebody who has greater opinions than their knowledge base uh and i think this speaks to yash's question as well Cri crit being critical is not a problem here um so thanks thanks guys uh the next question is if i get a rejection and reapply next year how would that be perceived does this put my candidature in a negative place i don't think so there are a lot of applicants who do get admit and even they can't take the position because of financial conditions and they reapply so as long your application is solid you don't need to worry about how it was perceived the year before i would say apply uh, how do we find reach out approach existing alumni scholars at oxford and elsewhere uh, i think the best source resource you have are the oxford university websites where you have the names and the emails of these scholars you can reach them out at linkedin where you have linkedin group for oxford university linkedin group for oicsd and so on then misbah has kindly posted 
quite a few links for both OICSD and EduAccess. So I would suggest you go through them if you're planning to apply. Is it necessary to put bibliography at the end of the essay? Okay, Father has responded to that. Thanks, Father. My request to everyone who's making an application is if you are taking any source of text from elsewhere, please cite it very, very clearly. If they find it's been taken without proper citation, it would be treated as plagiarism, even if it's self-plagiarism and it would be thrown out. Cite it very clearly. Uh, when it comes to written samples, is it necessary to submit something that aligns with a topic of research or can we submit something that's different from it? Uh, okay, Isha has answered that anyway. Super. I think that makes my job super easy. Thanks, Gaia. Yeah, I think we're also um, at the end, it's been one and a half hours, so I think we can also end the session now. Uh, very quickly on the links that I sent, um, uh, because there were a lot of repetitive questions, uh, please, please go visit the website of um, the center, the Oxford India Center for Sustainable Development. You'll find all of the information over there. Uh, this list of scholarships that are offered by the center, the eligible courses, the scholars who are at the center. Um, so please, that's the most important resource for you. Go have a look at the website. Um, so, um, and related to coming to Oxford or studying abroad for all of the questions there, we've developed uh, a number of resources that will help you in making your application, whether it's writing your CV, drafting your SOP. So please have a look at the resources that we've uh, developed. I've put a link to that in chat. Um, I've also put a link to our YouTube channel where we've done uh, public workshops on all of the scholarships that Medha referred to, which will, uh, which can help you study at Oxford. So if you want any information on those scholarships, please have a look at those workshops. Uh, we'll also uh, upload the recording of this workshop on our YouTube channel, so you can have a look at that as well. Um, and we conduct public workshops almost every weekend and um, you will find them updated on our link tree and I've put a link to that as well. Again, um, all, everything that um, you have generally asked, you'll find on the website. And if there's any question, you can either reach out to the panelists on their LinkedIn um, or you can send us an email at info at projecteduaccess.com. I'm just going to send um, that as well. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. Thank you so much, um, Ishan Harka, Medha Pahad for speaking to um everyone and talking about your experience um thank you so much siddharth for taking the time out and speaking to everyone i know it's a sunday afternoon and so this is um yeah we really do appreciate you taking the time out and being so patient um I think that uh, for, uh, for the person who's asking if they can ask a question, I'm just going to ask you to send us an email. I've put a link um, to, I've, I've sent our email ID. It's info at projecteduaccess.com. Please ask your question there and we'll put it to one of the scholars and, and get back to you. Um, yeah, and yeah, that's it. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, thank you. And all the very best to all the applicants. Please do apply. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. All the best. Okay. Bye. Thanks, okay. guys. Thank Bye. you. Bye. All everyone. the best, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you. I have Bye. a nice rest of, of the Sunday. Bye. <laughs>